Shadows of the Forgotten, a text-based roleplay and audiobook in the making, created by Game Masters Blackbird and Mr. Doomed, and honorary co-game master Trickster. Additional talents include Zero, Simbrand, Essence, Nibbles and Bits, Kalis, and The Sickness. All screen names used are in place to protect their owner's privacy. Any duplication or illegal copywriting will result in crows swooping down to pluck out your eyes in a slow, painful death. You have been warned. The White Shadows I was told as a child that the land of Alcrest was blessed by the gods with its beauty and magic. Now I'm no longer certain of such fact. Centuries of war have ripped the beauty of this land. Now only a shadow of its former glory remains, kept alive by old tales and legends. The magic now is simply viewed as a tool to be used by one side or another as an advantage in battle. No one speaks of blessings nowadays. I wonder what the gods would have to say about that. I'm no longer a child now, and I can go as far as to say I was never truly innocent growing up where I did. I know for a fact that Blackhurst was a city of enlightened. The scholars who once lived there only sought knowledge on their own origins, and they never thought their actions would cause the land to self-destruct. They simply wanted to understand where they came from. It was his innocent quest for knowledge that led us here. They found where they were, what they were looking for and were killed for their knowledge. Surely those people were being naive. They should have kept quiet as to what they were doing. They would have kept what they discovered a secret. If they had, none of this would have ever happened. I assume no living person outside of my clan knows how exactly this war has started. Danny Rivers was the last outside to hear the story. I violated the laws of this clan by telling her. We were sworn to secrecy, for obvious reasons. When the Enlightened started being killed, I thought I might have some relation to that particular piece of history, so I thought I should tell her. I'm still not convinced that it was an unrelated incident, in spite of having no actual facts to back up those suspicions. Something about the whole thing resembles something I read somewhere, however I can't quite remember what. I've read a lot of things in the past couple of decades. I always tell my apprentices this. The term enlightened today is associated with a magical ability an individual possesses. It once meant being knowledgeable, wise. That is why we study. Being born with a specific ability doesn't mean being fully capable of mastering that ability. We are all born capable of great things. Not all of us are capable of achieving that greatness, or even fully understanding what greatness means. To most, greatness still means power. To most, power still means force. Sounds very preachy, I know. I thought so too when I arrived in this place. The angry, impulsive child I was back then. I found it easier to simply curse the world for being as it is. Many similar children have arrived since then, now more than ever, orphaned, homeless, and lost children, filled with rage, void of any type of understanding, the perfect tools for any heartless egomaniac to use for the purpose of fulfilling its own delusions of grandeur. Some have been twisted for such purposes. I even heard rumors of cults and sects being raised far in the south. For me, it was difficult to accept the change I was being asked to make in my ways. It took me time to finally listen to what I was being told. My enlightenment was not the curse I believed it to be. The real curse was my lack of willingness to develop it. Fear, perhaps. What does this have to do with anything? Well, everything is relevant when it comes to this land. Everything is connected in a way or another. Every action causes a reaction, if not now, in the future. The past is never truly dead. It sleeps soundly, until one day it begins to stir in its sleep and causes the ground to shake, sometimes even crumble beneath our feet. And so we fall. Only time will tell when we will finally ever hit the bottom. That is, if there is even a bottom to hit after all. Helena Turner, Leader of the White Shadows A diary page left behind dated ten years ago. That was all Lena Turner left of herself for the ones who had followed her for twenty-five years. A new dawn came for the White Shadows, and many others followed. Now, three years later, 
they are barely starting to return to the ruins of Blackhurst, where they once built their homes. One foot there, another one in the desert, ruins of Brightvale. The healers were finally closer to what they once were, thanks to the effort, endless efforts of Lainey's younger daughter. However, their numbers are now severely reduced, and the unbreakable faith that once drove them to die for their beliefs was, in the very least, shaken. Many healers deserted. A great number of them left Velcrest, for good after having seen the war reach the only safe place left. It was undeniable that those people were not prepared for such a thing. For those who stayed, however, there was still the never-ending and exhausting task of providing help to those who needed it. The Desert Legends tell that the goddess called Heart was one of the most rebellious of the fourteen children of the gods that fathered Valcrest. Impulsive and irrational, some would say. Her passion for the mortal things only matched by her anger towards mother and father for forcing her to leave them and the forest where her and her twin made their home. She revolted and chose a mortal man to father her children, encouraging her siblings to do the same so that this way they would never truly leave Valcrest. Unlike her brothers and sisters, Hart became attached to her children, and so she used her powers to summon the packs of wolves that lived in the snow-covered lands to the north and to the forest as her final gift to the children of the forest, explaining to them that the wolves were never, that the wolves were always true to their hearts and loyal to their families, and so, as long as they remained together, they would always be protected. She did warn them that they would always be stronger as long as they were able to remain as one. Hart's twin brother, Mind, on the other hand, was not one to grow attachments to any mortal creature. He left his children in Valcrest for the sake of maintaining balance in the world, for without a reason there could be no order. He used his sister's gift to pass his teachings to his sons and daughters, telling them to always remember that the wolves always maintained a hierarchy, and every member of the pact played his part, for no task was unimportant. The leader should always be the wisest, strongest, and most respected among the members. Otherwise, he would be challenged and cast aside. And so, when heart and mind left Valcrest, they left behind their clan, today known as the Wolf Pack. The legend has been told to children of the Wolf Pack as a bedtime story for generations. It was Crystal's favorite as a child, and it was also Danny's favorite way to remind her of her responsibilities. Ever since she was little, she would hear her mother say that the pack had two leaders to represent the twins, because only one person ruled the clan alone. There could never be balance, and without it the clan would fall. Now, however, Crystal Rivers stood in a very different position, exiled to the desert for the past three years. She had her hands tied as her clan fell to pieces. The wolf pack was no more. What was left was barely recognizable as the proud assassin clan that it once was. The people who once lived there still lived there, for the most part, but the clan was no more. That was how she saw it. The betrayal had been painful. Not only the assassination attempt that left her very close to death, but the attacks on her parents' honor after everything they had done for the clan. The few people who had followed cries into the desert didn't complain about the new life. In fact, most of them seemed to think that it was far better than what they had three years ago. Life in the desert was less conflicted, and they mostly enjoyed the company of the mercenary clan that had taken them in, as well as few remaining healers. Even so, Christ couldn't see, seem to get over the fact that the wolf pack had fallen apart under her command, and of the few choices she was left with, she was still tempted to try and salvage the past somehow, knowing very well that there was probably nothing left to save by now. The Wolf Pack Once upon a time, the Wolf Pack stood tall, proud, and untouchable. Those days ended with the appearance of a group of men and women called the Wolf Hunters. Those people who called themselves victims of the assassins terrorized the clan for generations, killing without mercy anyone that stood between them and their targets. They posed a severe threat to the pack's survival. In one night, one damned night, the hunters attacked the camp, and one blow they took out all the recruits, most of the instructors, and of the leader's family, only one survived. That night came to be remembered as the Red Night, and until this day, it remains the biggest massacre to ever occur within the pack's territory. 
In the morning that followed such a massacre, a young Donnie Rivers, shortly after burying her parents and twelve-year-old sister, along with a great part of the clan, announced that she would declare war on the wolf hunters, and that she would not rest until every life lost that night was avenged. Two long years, and many lives later, the wolf pack celebrated their victory over the wolf hunters. The clan was rebuilt, and thrived for over twenty years after that, under Danny's command. The above story was the official tale that had been told to every new arrival and to all the children born in the clan ever since that fated night. Sean Fletcher had grown up believing it, and so did his brothers and sisters, and everyone else in the clan. However, the story was a lie. Danny won the respect of her clan by winning a war that she fought out of guilt, not revenge. The truth, the actual truth, was that Danny had lied to her mother to her clan and brought a wolf hunter into their camp. Along with him, death followed. The hunters raised hell to avenge the death of the boy named Sebastian. However, he was never dead to begin with. He was alive and well living among the assassins. Now almost thirty years later, after the truth has been exposed, the pack tries to rid itself from its past and change under new leadership. The situation of the assassins had improved. But the clan as a whole suffered a severe blow by having the most important part of their history exposed as a lie. Those who remained under the new leadership are struggling to stay together, even with all that has improved. The truth is, the pack is yet to find its place in the world again. Three years have passed since Shadows of the Past. The several factions, as well as the cities, have cleaned up the debris left by the final battle, parties, and storms, and attempted to move on with their lives in the best way they could. Some of them now find themselves struggling to simply leave the past behind, others attempting to build a new future from scratch. Others are finding that things can in fact get worse than they have ever been before. Some are even catching a small glimpse of light in the end of a long period of uncertainty. The fighting amongst the factions seemed to have cooled off for the first time in the long while, in spite of the peaceful that it gives the land at first glance. Some wonder if this is really peace, or if war is simply evolving into a much more silent killer. Which is the actual truth, or if the truth is something else entirely beyond the simple mortal minds can grasp? That only time can tell. The History the official story of Valcrest. The land of Valcrest originally consisted of five great cities and some smaller villages. It was a vast forest and one great river that run that ran from one side to the, of the land to the other. The first two cities to be created were Black Pound and New Haven. These two cities exist existed ever since there was a record of a human life in Valcrest, and they coexisted in harmony for many centuries until the other cities were built and the land started to expand. Several power struggles started to shake the peaceful existence of the two cities. After many years of minor disputes, the two cities finally declared war. Out of the three other cities, the city of Elfert took the side of Black Bond, and the city of Brightvale took the side of New Haven. The fifth city, Blackhurst, decided to remain neutral. Ironically, it was the first to be attacked. After the great war that raged on for many years across the land of Valcrest, out of the five cities that existed there, only two remained, originally on opposite sides of a dispute that had begun, been long forgotten. The cities of Black Pond and New Haven continue to fight each other until this day. Valcrest was once rich and full of life. Now its territory is only a shadow of what it once was. Most of the population is now concentrated around the forest, the two remaining cities and the plains and the desert. The mountains to the south and the ruined town of Elfert remain unpopulated until this day, only visited by those who leave the land through the path, which are a rare few, since the easiest way out of Elcrest is through the north. The woods in the center of the land the Great Forest is the center of Valcrest, and at present time, the most populated area. Deep inside of the forest lies the territory of the Assassin Clan, the Wolf Pack. The small mercenary groups that could once be found there have now disappeared, fled from the pack's sudden urge to take over the territory of the forest.
The open trails that cross the forest and lead to the nearby cities are mostly respected and watched from a distance by the